only greatest issues around the world currently is the difficulty around contact tracing. How do we create an easier, more efficient way to do contact tracing that will help with epidemiological investigation? How do we shorten this time that it takes to um, find all the primary contacts of a COVID-19 patient? I think I have a solution to this problem. One that will make medical teams find primary contacts much easier and faster, and one that will help shorten the time frame for epidemiological investigation. Now, the current problem with contact tracing is that it is virtually impossible for these COVID patients to remember and know exactly the following things. One, all the stores they would have entered during the last 14 days before these symptoms would have developed or before they would have been tested positive for COVID-19. So it's almost impossible for them to remember every single store that they would have went in. And if they do remember all these stores, it is almost impossible for them to remember the exact time that they would have entered these stores. It is also impossible for them to remember all the people that they would have interacted with over the last 14 days within these stores um, and most importantly which cashier would have served them because if you are purchasing goods at a grocery for example you are selecting goods and you, are con you have physical contact with these goods and the cashier also has physical contact with these same goods because they are scanning these items so it is important to know who is the cashier serving this COVID-19 patient if we do find out that you have COVID-19 in the future it is also impossible to know who are the other individuals who was there in the store within the same time that you was there or within the same time that this COVID-19 patient was in that store, right? That those are things that it's, it is impossible to know currently with the technology that we are using for contact tracing. Now, my solution answers all these questions and it gives the CMO and the Ministry of Health these answers in a fraction of, a, well, in a few seconds, basically. Approximately one week ago, someone suggested that businesses should keep a log of all the customers who enter their establishment and they they suggested that these businesses keep a log by having people sign a book when they enter their name and time they enter but the problem with a log is that while you think you may help in contact tracing you may actually be spreading you know further spreading COVID-19 because now everybody have to come in contact with the same pen and the same book this this logbook while the pen can be sanitized easy with hand sanitizer or alcohol spray it is almost impossible now to come and sanitize this book because we all know liquid and paper don't work too well unless we are talking about liquid paper <laughs> now my solution uses google photos and it capitalizes on google photos ability to incorporate artificial intelligence and machine learning Google Photos is an application that allows users of any smartphone or computer device to upload unlimited amount of photos and videos to its cloud storage in high quality. And they can do so for free. Yes, absolutely free. Google Photos analyzes each of these photos using AI and it extracts all the text, all the details, all the tags, all the categories, any Thing that Google Photos find may be relevant. It extracts it using artificial intelligence and stores it in what we call a metadata file. Basically, it's a file that describes this photo. Now, if you take a photo of a car, for example, Google Photos will store the word car or yellow car as one of the description for that photo. So essentially, yes, a photo does have a thousand words to Google Photos. Now, if you have an image with text, so you have an image of a receipt, an image of a person ID card. Those texts are also pulled out and stored in this data file. And this data file can now be used to search through the photos for that specific photo. So this is how my plan works. So currently, most establishments have security guards who ensure that customers would have washed their hands, wear a mask, and they're also responsible for taking these infrared guns and um, these in infrared thermometers and testing the temperature of customers before they enter any store. Now, my solution would involve these same security guards, so no additional staff is needed, these same security guards to take 0 0.4 seconds, yes, 0 0.4 seconds to just take a photo of a customer ID card. And that's how long it takes to take a photo, 0 0.4 seconds, because most smartphones could launch a camera in 0 0.2 seconds just by using the physical shortcut. And it can take a photo because the shutter speed will be approximately 0 0.2 seconds as well. So in total, all it takes is 0 0.4 seconds for the security guard to whip out his phone, well not his phone, but the company phone, and take a photo of your ID card. Now what that does, 
it stores, it basically logs your entry into this business. So it is essentially a digital log, um, which will have your name, the exact time you enter the store, and a photo of yourself. Now, children under 15 years do not have any form of national ID, so what can they use? Well, I would suggest that they use a passport size photo and any digitally printed paper with their name on it. So, for example, they can go to any print shop and pay, I believe, 2 to $5 to get a piece of paper with their passport size photo and their name next to it. And that would serve the purpose. And if you're an adult, you have a national ID card, but you have these privacy concerns about people taking photos of your national ID, then you can use the same paper that the children are using with your passport size photo and your name. Because that is all we need to sort and have this digital log of when you entered a, a, any store when you would have taken any taxi. Now, after this photo is taken, this happens in the background. So this is no work on, the, on behalf of the security guard or on behalf of anyone. This happens in the background because of artificial intelligence. After this photo is taken, this photo will automatically be uploaded to Google Photos. And when it's uploaded to the cloud, Google Photos Cloud, over the next two to three hours, Google Photos is going to use artificial intelligence to analyze this photo and extract all the details it sees from this photo. And it will store those as tags to describe this photo. So for example, again, as I mentioned before, if you see a red car, it will store a red car as a description for this photo. In fact, I um, have Google Photos here. And if I was to open my Google Photos and search for the word tachometer, all the tachometers I've ever taken in my life, it, it's going to come up. If I type my father's name, then any photo I have of my father or any photo with his name, such as his ID card, it would come up. So now that this happens in the background and these tags are attached and stored as part of the photo, therefore, if the next day any person becomes symptomatic and is tested positive for COVID-19, the Ministry of Health or the CMO can inform the stores of person XYZ entering your store on this day and they would have had COVID-19. Can you check to know who were the primary contacts or who they would have interacted with or how long they stayed in the store? Right? All the business needs to do now is to open your Google Photos app and search for the name of that patient. So suppose it's Giovanni. So you search for Giovanni and his photo ID will come up. And when his photo ID come up, you can scroll and view the description of that photo ID. You will see the exact time he entered the business. So now that you know the exact time he entered the building, you can do several things. For one, you can see all the customers who entered the building before him and all the customers who entered the building after him within any 10 minutes or any reasonable span of time. So that would ensure that you know the customers who was in the same store the same time he was in that store. And if you know the exact time he entered the store as well, you can correlate that time. You can synchronize the time on your phone with the time on the security cameras in your store. If this photo was taken at 8.59 a.m. and 42 seconds, you check your security camera at 8.59 a.m. and 42 seconds, and you see who is that individual. Now that you know who is that individual, suppose if your um, establishment has security cameras, most don't, but, but for those that, that do have it, you will now be able to track all his interactions within the store and see exactly which cashier he would have cashed at before leaving the store. Furthermore, Google Photos also stores the location of these photos when it is taken. It is one of those details that is attached to the description of the photo. Um, and now that you have the location, if this person were to enter more than one branch, so for example, if this person were to enter three Pennywise branch over the week, all these companies need to do is search for the name of this patient and you will see the different branches they would have entered and the time they would have entered each branch. So you would be able to perfectly track where they were and what time they were and who else was in the store when they were in the store. Now this can be easily implemented for taxi drivers as well. By taking a photo of the passenger's ID when picking them up, remember this takes only 0.4 seconds. Each taxi driver should have their own Google Photos account and there should be a larger album for the entire taxi stand. What this allows is that if a COVID-19 patient were to um, take a cure taxi for example so if you search for the name of this patient you will be able to see who uploaded that photo so you will know who is the taxi driver that would have transported this patient and you will be able to tell who are the other passengers in the car when this photo was taken all this data could be pulled 
from using Google Photos. And that is the power of artificial intelligence. We are using artificial intelligence to our advantage. And this is why I think this is a brilliant and beautiful idea. This also provides numerous safety benefits to stores since it reduces robberies because under rational choice theory of crime, criminals usually scope out a business before robbing this business to reduce the risk of getting caught. Now, in order to scope out this business, these criminals would have obviously had to have their ID taken because they would have had to enter the store before in order to scope it out. And because their ID is taken, now they have a higher chance of being caught and so they are less likely to rob this business. Additionally, it provides health and safety benefits to any business. For example, if there were to be a fire in the building and the building were to be evacuated, the security guard who would have had the data on his phone of all the uh, customers or all the individuals in the building could now cross-reference the people on the, at the master point and the people who would have recently entered the building. And then he would have known, he would have been able to tell who are the in individuals still trapped in the building because he has a photo of their ID, they would have entered the building in less than 10 minutes, but they're not there at the master point, therefore they must still be in the building. And so this could help in that area as well. Now, if you use Google Photos wisely, you can be able to log people who are going in a building and people who are coming out just as fast. You just need to know how to implement it and how to implement it properly. Obviously, this is not the only solution. There, I'm sure there are many other solutions out there that could work to reduce uh, the tediousness of contact tracing. But for any solution to be feasible, it must meet five main criteria. One, it must be cheap. Two, it must be timely, thus using existing technology. Three, it must be easy to understand, use, and implement. Four, it must be safe. Five, it must have the capacity to handle the entire country at once. So let's explore a little bit of each of these and how it fits into my solution. One, it must be cheap. Google Photos is absolutely free to use and most companies can't afford a smartphone with a good camera. There exist many budget smartphones with amazing cameras such as the Google Pixel 3a. The reason I say Google Pixel is because Google allow their smartphones to upload to Google Photos at original quality, which is better than at the high quality that other smartphones are allowed to upload at. Now both will work fine, don't get me wrong, Samsung and iPhone will still do the job, but Google phones are a little bit cheaper, the Pixel 3a and so on. It's a little bit cheaper and it will do an amazing job. Buying a smartphone is the only real cost associated with implementing this strategy, but a company can make back most of the money it spent on the smartphone after a year or two when COVID-19 is over by simply selling back the phone. These phones usually hold resale value. Yes, it would have had some depreciation, but you would still make some fraction of the money back. The second point was that it must be timely, thus use already existing technology. This technology already exists and is readily available such that companies can start implementing this method by tomorrow morning. Point three, it must be easy to understand, use and implement. Now, Google Photos has a very simple user interface. Anyone, including your grandmother, can use Google Photos. All the hard work is done by artificial intelligence in the background. And so from the user point of view, all you need to do is open your camera and take that photo. It uploads automatically to Google Photos. The searches are very simple and it is very easy to use. Now point four, it must be safe. And this is a very important point. Now Google Photos is protected by your Gmail password on the first layer of security. However, companies should implement a two-factor authentication, which adds another layer of security. What two-factor authentication does, it ensures that if any other computer were to sign in using that Gmail and password, so if, a, if another company or another individual were to acquire your Gmail and password through some phishing attempt, they still cannot get access because only through the manager phone or only through some some specific phone which you would have set prior to setting up the account, only through that specific phone can you approve the login in of any new computer. So that's a two-factor authentication. Now, you, Google has taken it even a step further and you could add another layer of security through the use of a physical Google security key. Now, the whole concept of a Google security key uses some very complicated encryption and I would not spend the time in this video to explain that that will be saved for another video, but it could be done. 
you know, 0.5. It must have the capacity to handle the entire country at once. And I, I have to read this part. In May of 2017, Google announced that Google Photos has over 500 million users who collectively upload over 1.2 billion photos every day. 1.2 billion photos every day. What that means is that on a daily basis, since 2017, Google Photos has been uploading and handling 1,000 times Trinidad population in photos. So I understand that there are a lot of other details and small issues to work out. If you're going to criticize this, make sure and suggest a better option. Make sure and suggest a better solution because let's fix this together. Now, I am willing to volunteer my time and have discussions with the Ministry of Health and any company wishing to implement this strategic solution or who may just be seeking my advice on this matter. You can contact me at 495-6969 or shanemusai at live.com. I am just willing to help. I am volunteering my time. My aim is simply to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in Trinidad and Tobago using a modern and technological approach. If you think this solution can work, and if you really think that this solution makes sense, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this with your friends. Keep sharing this until it reaches that person who can make this a reality. Um, my name is Shane Musai, and you're watching Musai Tech. Thank you for watching. <music>